Hello people, I can see everybody popping in. It's running very slightly behind myself, but there we go. My lovely mum dropped in to bring my birthday bits round. And we said, oh, stay for tea. And then we got chatting and suddenly I was like, uh-oh, <laughs> it's nearly seven o'clock. Hi Liz, hi Angela, hi Chiara, how are we all? Hi Renata, Catherine's here as well, hi Catherine, and Cecile, welcome everybody. <sighs> so, a little bit more on romantic country this evening. So I've finished my stonework, as you can see, I never want to see another piece of stonework again. <laughs> Oh, you finally made it, Catherine. Well done. <laughs> so tonight I'm going to do a little bit of work on the foliage. Um, I just, I can't quite decide what I'm doing with the roof. So while I'm indecided, it's probably best to leave well alone. So I'm going to do a bit of work on the foliage tonight. And I'm going to be using Castle Arts watercolours. Julie, you're in the right place again. You're getting so good at this. And Roberta's here as well. Hello, everyone. So, Castle Arts watercolour pencils this time. And I'll probably be going over a little bit in some prism colour as well. So, watercolour this evening. So, here we go. Let me just grab the ones that I'm going to be using so I can show you the colours. Woohoo, says Julie. I know. You're getting good at this turning up in the right place. It's, it's, it's getting good. <laughs> so the colours I'm using tonight, we've got some leaf green, some castle green light, some Prussian green and some juniper. Hola, Roberta. <laughs> nice to see you. So I'm kind of doing, again, a basic colour graduation. So... <laughs> Sam, I'm glad you said it and I didn't say it. Honestly, the things that come out of my mouth when I'm on live stream. Yesterday I was like, just why? Why on earth did I say that? <laughs> Never mind. Here we go. So I'm going to work on the bits I can easily get to under the camera tonight. So let's work on this bigger of the, uh, of the bushes here. <laughs> So the first one I'm going to go in with is this juniper green. So I'm going to get the base coat down of these first. And then once the base coat's down, I will make some adjustments and tweaks with my Prismacolor. Stop laughing, Sam. I just can't think about it. And then you just suddenly think, why on earth did I put that in a direct message? I'm not going to rehash it for this live, though. We'll say it's one of those ones where you had to be there. So I'm going to get the, the darkest colour in first and then work around it so shark queen is using castle arts as well brilliant so fine with these it's a lot easier to get a lot done quicker really and so we can get the base layer down with these watercolors and then do some tweaking along the way so i'm gonna have a darker area coming through here. So I've decided I prefer these to the Arteza watercolours, definitely. They're more pigmented. I just definitely prefer them. Hi Dulcie. And Angela is here as well. And Evelyn, quite a few of you dropping in. So I'm just going to pick out the darker areas of this first. Oh, Noor made it as well. Hi Noor. So those of you that weren't around on my Facebook Live last night will see that we've made some progress. If you head over to my YouTube channel, you'll be able to catch up on what you missed yesterday. I'll only apologise now for the um, direction some of the discussion <laughs> went in. It was um, quite random. I'm not sure getting it one-sided without reading the comments will make an awful lot of sense, but you might have to just bear with us. So what's Julie saying? Oh, you, I vaguely remember you saying, Julie, that you'd use the castle arts on the house. That's good. Hi, Anna. So I'm toying with the idea of getting the 120 set. This is the 72 set that I've got at the moment. Definitely prefer them to the Arteza, though. Hiya, Dominique. 
So I'm just using these little lines that have been drawn in as a bit of a hint of where some of the lighter areas would be and kind of working around it as well. And this is Cat Ladies here as well. Hello there. So let's carry on. Use the Brute Finish. I haven't tried those pencils, nor. I don't know whether they're wax or um, oil based. Julie says, get them, our turn to enable you. I think if um, much more arrives at this house over the next few days, my poor wife's going to have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> Aren't you? No. She says no. She's sitting colouring at the moment. She's um, trying to finish off her Doctor Who book. So the fine liners are out. What are the pencils? Tonight we're in Castle Arts Watercolours, Dominique. But to be honest, Julie, I don't need a lot, an awful lot of enabling. So some of you that were on the discussion yesterday will know that it's my birthday tomorrow and we are going to two or three art supplies stores tomorrow. And um, I may well be coming home with more stuff. Oh, thanks, Sandra. Oh, no, they're oil-based, are they? That's interesting. So if you've got polychromos, do that, are they similar to those? And do I actually need them? <laughs> So you've got these, Dominique, but haven't used them yet. Perfect opportunity to uh, get them out of the tin and give them a go. So I'm just putting down these little darkest bits first. And just readjusting sort of as I go. So I have a little darker area under here as well, because we'll use this as a bit of like an overlap. Oh, you've got the 120 set, have you? Yeah, I'm, I've been looking at those. They're quite a good price on Amazon at the moment. About 45 quid-ish. And when I mentioned them to Catherine earlier, she made all the right noises, didn't you? <laughs> if you want them, get them. I was like, no, but I'm going to need like a, another house at this rate. It's just ridiculous. So any other areas that I want to have sort of dark-ish bits. Do you know what? I'm going to put a little hint of it all the way along the wall, actually. Ah, oh, Jeanette's here as well. How's the new nanny doing? And more importantly, how is baby and mummy doing? I hope they're all still well after yesterday what a cutie so i'm just making doubly sure that i've got enough coverage on here you know that watercolor they are going to be a little bit faint anyway but i'm going to sort of go over these with um with prismacolor as well i think so next lightest is the prussian green so number 55 just keep this lurking. Oh, Daniela's here as well. Hi, Daniela. Loads of you um, dropping in. So I know this is sideways on for you guys. Um, I always do it this way because, of course, I put these up on YouTube. So if you do want to be able to watch this the right way round, maybe just watch what I'm doing and listen and go back over later on to YouTube where it will, of course, be the right way round for you guys. They're both, well, lovely. Have we got a name for him yet, Jeanette? What have we called the little chap? So I'm just going to overlay that juniper green layer as well and then just work this outwards. Let's just move this up a little bit. So yeah, I spent the rest of yesterday evening just um, re-going over the um, walls of the house with those luminance pencils, just tidying things up a little bit. Messing around for absolutely ages trying to decide on roof colours and I'm still undecided. Charlie Alexander, oh lovely. Charlie Alexander he's called. <laughs> little cutie. Bless him. So yeah, I'm kind of a bit undecided really on um, colours for this roof. So while I'm feeling undecided, I thought I'm just going to leave it alone and get on with the foliage. So again, because these are watercolours and we're going to kind of be smushing them all into each other, not being massively careful really about how I'm blending. I just want to get the right shade of green in the right place. Little bits like that where you've got a bit more pigment, you can correct that when you activate them anyway with water. So 
and just move down a little bit as well and just carry on overlaying and then I'll activate this one and go on to the other side. Some of the little more fiddly ones, I can't really get to them too well on here. Oh, Angela, your youngest name, middle name's Alexander. Oh, that was so lovely. It's like I was waiting all through the live for news of this, um, of this little baby appearing. That was good fun. Right, let's just tie this in as well. So I'm just using little circles like I did yesterday with the watercolours, not really too worried about blending and shading, we're just getting the right colours in the right place. So a little bit of Castle Green Light, Let me just adjust this lamp slightly, get the light a bit better, that's better. 46 hours Jeanette, oh my goodness, you must have been very, very anxious, that's a long time, your poor, poor daughter, wow. She's going to need a good rest after that. Just going to give this a quick sharpen. Okay, here we go. Just making sure this is in shot. So depending on how sort of dark or light you want in these, you'll use less and less of each colour as you go through them. I'm going to leave the very tips of this. I've pulled a little bit of leaf green out because I just want um, a slightly lighter edge on some of these. Hiya Hannah. Welcome. We are on foliage and trees tonight. Notice I'm saying foliage and not bush. We're not rehashing that from yesterday. That was really awkward. <laughs> oh dear me. So again, I want a nice sort of lighter edge on that one. So I'm just going to not quite take this all the way up to the edge. Oh, bless her. Is she home yet, Jeanette? Or is she still in hospital? Little Charlie was obviously wanting to take his time, bless him. Right, let's just go down to these edge bits here as well. just close that gap up. So when I activate these with water I'm going to be using my Caran d'Ache water brushes again and um, those of you that are on stream with me regularly will know that that's my preferred water brush because you've got a bit more control over the flow of water coming out. Another night for Charlie, ah oh, bless. So I'll hopefully be home very very soon, that's good. And just finish these off so I'm actually going to bridge the gap between these two sections and then I'm going to take this all the way to the edge here and we'll have the lightest edge as this little bit at the bottom. Yeah definitely something to focus on and aim for Jeanette definitely. So leaf green so number 111 this one's very very light and bright so we'll use this to tip off um, all of these very outer sections and then Prisma have got quite a nice selection of greens so once I've got this on and it's dry I'm not going to put a second layer of the watercolour on I'm actually going to go ahead and um, do any sort of tweaking around with regular pencil over the top I think as we were talking about yesterday, um, a few of you that were over on my Facebook group, I know Julie, you put a comment on earlier saying um, about how much quicker and easier it was to get the, sort of the big area done on the house. You know, it would have taken me hours to have done it with regular pencil. So this is a little bit of a cop out, but it's just a different way of, um, of doing things and, and getting the results a bit quicker. That owl uh, portrait thing that I was working on last week has um, really flared my tennis elbow, so I'm doing everything I can for an easier life at the moment. So just overlay some of that. There we go. So I'll get this one activated. I think I'm going to work from the top 
down. So we'll just unzoom a little. So those of you that are new to the lives, uh, apologies to those of you that are regular because I do repeat myself with these. So um, I prefer these Caran d'Ache water brushes because you have um, control over the water flow with these push buttons here. They are a little more pricey than some of the brushes on the market, but if you do like I did and buy two or three types before you get this, only to find that these actually work a lot better, you're kind of just cheaper to get these sort of first time really. I'm just going to uh, adjust the water here. Still slightly damp from earlier on, but we'll just get it going again. So you just push on the button. You can see the water coming into the tip of the brush there. And just give it a little second to actually saturate the bristles. Sometimes when you get them going, they can be a little bit too keen. So I usually just test it on the back of my hand. That's about there. Hannah, yours doesn't work properly anymore. That's a bit of a pain. And what's caused that? There we go, that'll do. So with these, I'm going to um, activate from the lightest area into the darkest area. So what's Shark Queen saying? You like using them for the large areas? Yeah, same here. I'm finding that these are a bit more user friendly because if, like me, you spend a lot of hours colouring in things and you've already got a bit of a weakness there like carpal tunnel or a um, bit of tennis elbow or whatever, um, the more work you put into some of these layers, it does get really, really painful. So I'm just using little circles. We're going from the lighter area into the darker area. So because I've got a little lighter area there, I'm just going to pick that up and then blend all of this backwards. So I'm just picking up excess pigment as I go. I'm going to push some of that um, dark pigment right up against the, the wall here. So of course you can move it around a little while it's still wet. Yes, you can, Catherine, definitely. See, water doesn't come down when you press the button. You've got the Arteza ones. That's really interesting. I wonder whether they just degrade a bit over time because I have noticed that the push button on this one is is getting temperamental, but then I have been using it for a long time. So if it, if it does go, I'll just replace it with another one rather than um, mess about with other brands and things. But the Arteza ones do interest me because I think they're push button ones as well, aren't they? I think. So tiny, tiny circles, just picking up those little excess bits of pigment. Just nudge this up. So let's start from this little section. You just have to just work um, reasonably quickly once you start because you can be left with little watermarks everywhere. I'm quite liking how this is looking, so I will just um, add the smallest amount, I think, of pencil over the top. I'm just going to blot that darker pigment around a little. And like I said, I know this probably isn't making a lot of sense to some people because it's on the side. Just bear with me because it will be up on YouTube later on. Just so when you um, when I film it the right way around for you guys on Instagram you get a really sort of dumpy, tiny screen on YouTube, which then looks really rubbish. So I will get this uploaded this evening and then it will be the right way around for you guys. So just moving these around. Our teaser one's about an inch longer, is it? Hmm. Interesting. They intrigue me, but I kind of like these, so I'm not really gonna I'm not gonna buy any other ones until this one gives up the ghost. Catherine's just um giving a little snort over on the sofa. Was that your yeah right you'll buy it if you fancy having it regardless of whether this one is broke kind of snort. It was mm -hmm. fair enough. <laughs> Stop sniggering. She's sniggering over on the sofa. It's not polite is it? 
That's your yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything that piques your curiosity and ends up in the Amazon basket then ends up on the doormat. We both know this. And just drag that dark pigment just along the side of the wall there. Just let this dry. So I've got a little bit of buckling on the paper. It's not a real problem. Um, as you can see from this yesterday, this was all watercolored as well. It's It's got a little bit of a kink to it, but it's it's dried up okay. So did I not get a free one with the metallic watercolor? Um, hmm. I think I did actually. Yes, I did, but it wasn't um, it wasn't a pushy button type of one like this. It was a squeezy one, which I haven't actually tried. Um, so, Phaedra, the stonework's gorgeous. Which pencils? So, this stonework was all done in Prisma, and this is Castle Art watercolors that we're using at the moment tonight. And then there will be some Prisma over the top. And the house was Arteza watercolors with luminance. So I'm pretty much checking everything at it, to be honest. <laughs> Oh, there's Maria as well. Hi, Maria. So here we go again. So exactly the same principle on the other side while this one dries. So juniper green. And again, using these little lines that are in the original image just to give you an idea really of where the edges of some of these individual branches would be. So they would be the lighter areas. So we'll start here. Do you still have snow in Greece today, Maria, or has it sorted itself out? So I'll push a little bit of that darker colour underneath there. Of course, we'll have more of that um, hugging the wall because that would be in shadow. And I'll work a little bit up here as well. Let's put a little bit of this in. So the greens that I used in the wall are more of like an earthy tone green. So I did want something a little bit more vibrant for the um, the other foliage and things, which is why I've gone for something so different. So I have a lighter edge there. So we'll push a bit of that darker colour underneath here. This is one that's slightly different shape to the other side. While I'm doing this little bit, I'll zoom us in a little bit more, which will make it easier for you guys to see. So where are we at? So we'll put a little tiny, tiny smidgen of this darker colour under here. And under here as well. So we're just ironing out where the light and dark areas are going to be sitting. So you don't have to put an awful lot of pressure on with these pencils to get a really good um, coverage with them. So again, we'll go under here. This would be our lighter edge. And under here as well. But yeah, I'm definitely toying with the idea of getting the full set of these because they are so much nicer than the Arteza ones I was using yesterday. Nor can I vote for orange, a.k.a. Garfield colour? If I miss part of the conversation here. <laughs> Garfield colour. What are you voting to be Garfield colour? I hope it's not the duck, because that's not going to happen. No orange ducks. I've got an idea for the duck. Right down here as well. Let's put a little bit of the, uh, the darker colour under this bit. The cat? Oh, okay. Or like a, a ginger cat? Yeah, possibly. I was thinking maybe calico, actually. A bit of um, sort of beigey, ginger, black, white type. I don't know. We'll see how the rest of it looks. The cat will probably be one of the final things that I do, depending on how some of the other areas are looking. Okay, I think that's probably about it with the juniper green. So we'll scoot over to this Prussian green again. So for those of you that are just joining, we're in Romantic Country and I'm using Castle Arts watercolour pencils. A black or grey kitty would be nice, possibly. Yeah, possibly so. 
it's like the roof, I'm a bit undecided. We'll see how it looks the further through that we get. So I'm hoping I will have made a decision about the, uh, the roof by Sunday, or well, that's gonna be a bit awkward. And Dominique, you've got cats that are calico tabby mixes. They must be lovely. Right, so we're just gonna add just a little bit of this because I want a nice light edge down here. So we'll just add a bit of this to the edges. And the same down here as well. Grey or blue. Yeah, maybe, like a Russian blue. When I think of the Russian blue cats, I think of that Dogs and Cats movie. You know the one I mean, don't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know, we'll see. We need to have a little think about it. It's like the curtain colour, I'm not sure what colour they're going to be yet either. What? Velvet green. You never take my advice. <laughs> Depends, I don't know, we'll see. Are you just gonna sit there heckling tonight? You are wonderful. <laughs> so cheeky. There we go, so then we will scooch over to the Castle Green light, so number 59. Catherine says a red front door, possibly. I'm thinking whatever goes on the door, the curtains probably need to be, I don't know, possibly. We'll see. It's because I'm a half a plan queen, I decide to do these pages with you guys and then have no clue how I'm actually gonna <laughs> finish the picture. It's a problem. Yeah, this bit, I needed a bit of colour. It was all looking a little bit monotone. Catherine's right about the curtain colour, says Noah. Whose side are you on? <laughs> so Avant colouring, I've finally finished the brickwork. have to decide what to do with the house. Well, do you have any other um, watercolour pencils? Because I'm using Castle ones at the moment. So if... You could use ink tents, any other brand of watercolour pencils. You can do whatever you like. It doesn't have to be the same as mine. That's part of um, the fun because it will never be an exact mirror image of mine unless it, it was my page. I like seeing the little differences from colourist to colourist. Noah is now laughing. <laughs> Getting ganged up on here. This isn't fair. It's my birthday tomorrow, you lot. <laughs> Let's keep on adding this towards the edge. And the same under here. Velvet red curtains. What did you say, velvet green? Green. green. I don't know, it's got green bushes and trees though. I think it needs mm. to be different. It needs to be different and not clash with the uh, colour of the house, which has ended up far more vibrant than I would have wanted it to. But we'll see. So I'm going to take this one all the way under the bottom of here. Grey curtains, really? No. <laughs> She's now suggesting grey. I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe I'll use my sparkle pens on them and just make them ridiculously bright, I don't know. And so the lightest one, just to give a nice pop of colour at the edge, is this leaf green. So I'm going to start at the top and work down. And just take this all the way into the little edges. Purple, says Dominique. Lots of houses this colour in Essex and Suffolk. There are. You know when you do something though and you imagine it's going to be a little bit more less, sort of muted than it is. And that, when I did it yesterday and it was like, hello, but mm, not sure. So Shark Queen says my door will be a darker blue. Let me just scroll back. 
with grey blue curtains. Julie says blue, which looks nice with orangey colours. So we're getting lots and lots of suggestions. This is good. Yeah, I might actually look at the colour wheel to find what colour would be really complementary with it because with it being quite a, I want to say garish, um, it's come out a lot brighter than I thought it would. But with it being quite vibrant, I don't want anything that's going to be too clashy. So I may go back to basics and just look at the colour wheel to see which would sit nicely with it. Because I'm just not seeing it at the moment, but we'll see. I may do the like the light glow and things from the window first and then make my mind up. At the moment, I just need to settle on a roof colour because that was doing my head in last night. Really indecisive. Um, and yet it took me about 10 minutes to decide on these greens earlier on. So blue curtains and door and a grey roof. I know, but does grey go with this brickwork? I honestly don't know thinking it needs to be like a warm ready brownie uh i don't know it's quite a dilemma you've got to think does gray go with that i'm not sure so jeanette says purple is complimentary it might be yeah it may well be i think i've got the color wheel in the drawer actually where i'm sitting but it's probably buried under a million of other things i'll have a look I think I'm, these are going to be like um, flower beds, I think, these little bits at the side here. Need to be a dark grey, yeah, it definitely would. That's what I was thinking, because black or dark grey goes with anything, but then is that going to be too... I don't know. You see my dilemma. And all because I've got a bright orange house. What? Red, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I have a suspicion I probably will go with red. We'll see. So I'm just getting this uh, this one going again. So just use the back of my hand. It's not quite there. That's better. So French grey with ready brown shading on the roof. Yeah, maybe. Let me just unzoom a little bit. Terracotta. Yes, quite possibly. There's some really nice, um, but I don't want to do the whole thing in watercolour, but there's some really nice um, warm browns and things, brownie reds in this set of pencils, which I think are quite complementary next to this very garish house that I've coloured. So, we'll, yeah, we'll see. But, yeah, it's a problem. So let's start again. I'm just going to angle this slightly to the side just because it's a different way around to the other one. So again, it's starting from the lightest shades. So I'm going to activate the very edge of this and then just work my way back. Just be a little bit careful at the top here. I don't want shrubbery leakage all over the place. Terracotta says Dominique. Dark red with the sienna brown. Yeah, maybe so. That's what I was thinking. I want to use some of the shades that I've used in the bricks to sort of bring everything together. So it's probably going to come from there. I don't think it will be a grey roof, but I may do the eaves and around the windows with grey. Potentially, that's what I was toying with earlier on. So it's, it is a dilemma. I will make sure that I have got a plan for Sunday. So just again, working my way down these lighter edges. I just tweak that all around and just work it all back again. So leaving that dark pigment at the side underneath this bit as well. And again under here, so pick up all of that light colour and then just work it back. And just wake up this darker colour under here. 
and push some of that into the wall. There we go. So same again. Let's work all of this backwards. So I'm just going to go into this little area here as well. And then work all of this back into this darker colour. Yeah, I will um, dry it on the other page. Do you mean how it's dried on the page underneath this one? Is that what you mean, Dominique? Just need pigment around a bit while it's still wet there we go so again let's activate these little edge bits all the way along is that what you mean in Dominique you want to see how the other side of the page is looking where it's dried I'm assuming that's what you mean So lots of little circles just brings all this pigment together. And I just squeeze that into the edge of the wall. And last little bit. And then I will find some prisma that matches this other side and do a little bit of tweaking. You are, if you want to sing Holy Spirit Activator, you, you go sing away. Um, no one's going to mind. <laughs> Funny. Right, so this one's still a little bit damp, obviously, but if I show you the other side, let's try and keep this off the, uh, the desk. So obviously all of this was watercolored over yesterday. So... You can tell that it's had watercolour on the other side because it's a little more crinkly, but there's nothing that's interrupted with any of these other pictures underneath at all. It's absolutely fine. Right, so let that carry on drying. This should be okay by now, which it is. So let me find some complementary prisma colors that are going to go with this so <laughs> now that i'm going to want chartreuse so i'm just looking i've got my color charts here sorry for the glare so i'm just having a little look at which of the greens are going to closely match this i think i want a bit of apple green as well um, possibly a bit of spring green and I think the darkest one is probably going to be grass green. Let's have a little look. Right, I'm just going to have a quick mouthful of my juice before we get going again. So I'm going to go nice and steady with these because I'm not going to know um, how much of a good match they are until we try them. So I'm going to try on the darkest edge first a little bit of this grass green. So this is back to Prismacolor. This is this grass green 909. I'm just going to get these out of the road so they're not rolling down the desk on me. And let's just zoom us in slightly again. This is nice and dry now, so I'm just going to try this at the very edge. Yeah, that's sitting really nicely above that. So I could have just gone in with the um, Castle Arts Classics, but I don't want to. I'm going to use these ones because I don't have the full set, so not everything is matching anyway. So I'm not wanting to completely obliterate the watercolour effect. I just want to smooth over and add shadow in any areas where I want there to be more shadow. 
So I'm just going to, again, start with the darkest areas first and just pick out little bits that I want to be a bit more dark than they already are. Barely touching the page, just enough to smooth things out. Trying desperately to keep my hand out of this other, this other bush on this side because it's still not quite dry. So I'm going to take that all the way up to the top because it's right against the side of the wall there. So I'm holding the pencil more on the side rather than going in with the pointy end down because I don't want harsh stop start lines, you just want to glaze the colour on. So if you just use the pencil on the side you get a really smooth coverage. Really small amount of pressure on the pencil as well, you need to be really soft handed when you're doing something like this. So under here, I want just a tiny bit of that darkest green under there. And then under here as well. And definitely along the edge of this wall. So I'm going to use these same greens on, there's um, a little bit of foliage at the bottom here on either side and there's also the trees as well. So they will all be done in exactly the same colours. So those of you that are colouring along, that will be done ready for Sunday. So if you guys want to do the same, then you'll be up at the same point that I'm at. So just smooth out under there. I can just see a little bit where I hadn't quite moved the pigment around. So by doing it this way, you're avoiding putting a second coat of the water-based products onto the page. I think the paper quality in this book is okay. It's not as good as um, Johanna's books um, by a long shot. I think if I put a second layer of the water-based products on here, the page would be like soup. So I would suggest that you, you do something similar to this or you're going to have um, a book that's a little bit water damaged, I suspect. There we go. So I'm going to transition that into an apple green. I'm going to see what that looks like. So this, I think, so well used, is 912. So again, Prismacolor apple green. So I'll start at the top again and work my way down. Just want to see how this sits over. Yeah, that's not too bad. Not going to want an awful lot of that because it's quite dark. So just enough. I'm going to get those uh, lighter ones on as well. And under here as well. So again, exactly the same. Pencil on the side, just glazing the colour on. Have a little bit more of this because we've got a, a bigger area. And here as well, just smooth this out. And under here. So there'll be a little more of this down here because we're at the base. It's going to just really smooth that watercolour out. So I'm going to see, I may not need this um, spring green but I'm going to give it a go. So spring green 913 is the next one. And the other one that I'm going to be using on the edge is the chartreuse which is 989. And just see how these look. You never quite know how these are going to work until you give them a go. I'm hoping these are kind of as near as damn it to uh, these other ones. So just smooth out these edges. So particularly up here, I think the chartreuse is going to sit really nicely above that colour. 
So I just want to um, make a better transition between these two areas. So I just push it a little bit harder here. It is coming together well. Yes, thank you, No. Jeanette's liking it as well. It's such a simple way of, of using different media. If, if I was trying to shade this out just with pencil, I wouldn't even have finished this one yet. My arm would be screaming. That would be more ibuprofen gel being put on because my tennis elbow is not happy at the moment at all. And you can get something really pretty and it's really straightforward to do. Just one colour with a uh, layer with the wolf's colours and just correct with similar coloured pencils over the top. You'll pass on the chartreuse. Why are you passing on the chartreuse? No, is that not a colour that you like? <laughs> oh dear. I quite like the chartreuse. It makes a nice um, overblend colour when you're doing leaves and things. Quite partial to um, chartreuse. I think this is about my third, my third one of these. Oh, thank you. Colour for fun, like in the brick wall. Thank you very much. I have to say, I never want to see another brick wall again as long as I live. Um, <laughs> I was absolutely sick to death of uh, brick walls last night. I'm trying to watch Call the Midwife and think I will colour the finish these bricks if it's the last thing I do this evening. I was not in my happy place <laughs> when I was finishing them up last night. <laughs> I'll take care, Jeanette. Oh, no, you're going to have to have a go. I thought you said you were going. <laughs> Oh, after Magical Jungle, you'll pass for a bit. Yeah, I can sympathise. I must admit that most of this pencil I've used has been in, in Magical Jungle as well. It's all those tropical leaves that we do. <laughs> right, let's just tidy these edges up now. I think that this will sit quite nicely over the top. Oh, yeah, that's lovely. So I'm pushing a little harder here because we're right at the edge and I just want to blend that backwards into the other layers. In fact, I need to tweak that bit there. So I'm just going to um, go back on with that apple green again. A little bit of tweaking needed. That's better. And in here as well, just blend this backwards. So really pick up all those highlighted edges. Yeah, it's definitely a good way of colouring a large space, um, Dominique. Definitely. Probably going to do the sky with um, watercolour pencils as well, just because I really can't be bothered messing around blending it all um, manually at the moment. I'm really enjoying using different media, all the glittery paints and other bits and pieces. So I'll carry on just blending this back as well. So I'm pushing a little bit harder in here because I'm wanting to merge this with the other colours underneath. Let's just carry on tidying up down here. So again, just remember, guys, if you wanted to see this the right way up, it will be on YouTube before the end of the evening. And of course, you'll be able to see it the right way around. So don't want quite as much on there. And we just need to tweak these couple of areas. So I'm just going to go back on with the um, grass screen. So just sitting back away from the light and looking at it in more natural light and I can just see little areas that need to be tweaked slightly. And just go back in and correct those. <laughs> yeah, that's not quite as smooth as I want it to be. So I'm just cycling through those, um, those greens just to get it blended the way that I want it to blend. beautiful so you can see very much see the difference between this one that's had a layer of pencil over the top and this one that's just the watercolor and this one's nice and dry now so I'm just going to do exactly the same thing with this side so I'll keep that grass green pencil on the go because we go from darkest to lightest why you wish you didn't have these things because they're quite uncomfortable to lean on. So get that right up to the edge of the wall there. And as well, by I well, can't speak, add a layer of these pencils over the top. If you do decide to go back in and shadow, you've actually got something to blend the shadow colours into. So I may well tweak that, we'll see how it looks. 
so taking a little bit more care around this bit because these areas are a little bit smaller than the other side. So bring just a little hint of that underneath there. Have a bit more of it under here, I think. So just easing off on the on the pressure on this side. And under here. Yeah, that door, the door situation, the curtain situation is really troubling me. I can't make a decision. I think it needs to be red, I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. <laughs> just thinking back to the live yesterday. Liz has just put a comment on saying beautiful bushes. <laughs> oh, dear. One of the other... Um, admins on the the big facebook group the johanna bassford your pages group we were just chatting through messenger earlier on and um when i was we were talking about that conversation in the live yesterday and she said she nearly spat her coffee down herself when i said that i was like oh dear sorry <laughs> a little bit awkward potentially choking a friend the other side of the pond with um, the stupid things that come out of my mouth it was your fault you saying right i'm going to go mount my ship wonderful dear lord so you'll be pleased to hear she successfully did mount her ship yesterday it's sitting on its mount looking very beautiful on top of the cabinet um yeah she's just trying to decide if she's doing an aeroplane see Nor's laughing as well now um, she's going to try to decide if she's going to do an aeroplane or her fire truck that I bought her for a birth, not a birthday, for Christmas. For your birthday? That's not till July. What am I talking about? <laughs> it's all gone to whatnot. <laughs> but yeah, or the lifeboat. She's got a lifeboat as well. So answers on a postcard. Should she do an aeroplane, a fire truck or a lifeboat? <laughs> Julie. Julie's just put, I hope Catherine bought it dinner first. <laughs> oh, God, it's all gone to whatnot. <laughs> and Jeanette says, teehee, I hope she was gentle. <laughs> Jeanette. <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> oh, Lord, seriously. you got to laugh, haven't you? Right, so Apple Green, 912 again. Hi, Elise. Welcome to the madness that is one of my live streams again. It's all gone a bit weird again. <laughs> she definitely didn't buy it dinner first. I think she made it a coffee. But yeah, it's looking good, isn't it? You're pleased with it, aren't you? Yes. Mm. But yeah, should she do the lifeboat, the aeroplane or the fire truck next? I don't know which one gets my vote anyway. <laughs> the fire truck. The fire truck, yeah. <laughs> I'll need a lot of red. <laughs> you will need a lot of red, so it's a very good job that we're going to Hobbycraft tomorrow. And the Coleman's Art Warehouse. Because, you know, I need more art supplies in my life at this moment in time. <laughs> Right, I'm just trying to really soften this. Shocked and appalled, as I would have said to my students, oh dear. Nothing new then, says Elise. No, exactly. My live streams are always a bit bonkers. I've been assured that's part of what you guys love, so that's fine. Let's just carry on softening these over. So this one's a very different shape, really. It's kind of almost stripy, really. The fire truck. Oh, Angela, you went to Coleman's. What did you buy? I need details. What did you buy? I cannot wait to um, get over there. Noah says the fire truck and Liz say the fire truck. I say the fire truck, so that's three votes. I think it might be the fire truck. Dominique says we need to see said mounted ship. That can potentially be arranged. 
let me finish up with the apple green so I know too much. Angela, that's not what I call giving details, just saying too much. I need specifics. What did you buy? Definitely need details. Right, let me unzoom. This is quite a big, can I just tip it to the side? Yeah. Something drops off this now, she's literally going to kill me. So, this is said mounted ship. So the HMCS Snowberry. So it's quite big, as you can see. Lots and lots of detail. And then all of these little components had to all be built up layer by layer by layer. She literally has the patience of a saint. All these whoopsie daisy, tiny little layer, <laughs> tiny little bits. She's just having a kitten at me twisting this over. So as you can see, this is quite a project. Something drops off this now, I'm gonna die. <laughs> so yeah, that's what she's been working on. Right, take it off me before it becomes a shipwreck. <laughs> <laughs> you took it away now. It's gone. There's lots of wows and amazings and little heart type things going <laughs> up the screen. So Angela bought ink tents, a Chinese white drawing pencil, paintbrushes, post skirt, plastic and plastic wrap to cover her colouring pages. Yeah, I'd say you bought half the shop there. That's a good effort. Well done. Yeah, that's a good point. Catherine's just said, did you leave anything there for me to buy tomorrow when I go? <laughs> Ooh, they do Posca. Catherine's just have got a sort of look of silent resignation on her face. Julie's, um, so Anna says, well done. Dominique says, you've got a lot of patience. Julie says her hubby is very impressed. And Angela in New Zealand had an Amazon accident after work at midnight. Oh dear, what was your happy Amazon accident, Angela? Tell, tell, tell. So I'm going into Spring Green 913. She, Angela says she did her best to leave stuff there for me to buy. <laughs> Shucks. Oh, shut up, you. <laughs> That's not nice, is it? Oh. <sighs> Anyway, I'll be dragging you out of the model section in Hobbycraft. No doubt. Yep. So there we go. It's going to be an exciting day. I'm looking forward to it. And I might be going in Heavenly Desserts for my lunch. Which is going to do my lack of waistline, you know, a lot of good. But I don't care. It's my birthday. So carry on just layering this around, smoothing bits out again. This one's going to be a bit more vibrant than the other side, I think. So, more of this one in here. It's sort of different to the other side, really. There's lots of um, gaps between it. The, the lines on this don't flow quite as well, but it's still going to look good. So, Angela in New Zealand got castle art pastel tints and castle art watercolours. Excellent, you'll have all the right colours to follow along on this one but the question is do you have the book because if you don't have the book that could be another amazon incident needed so i think a few of you guys have actually bought this um this book angela didn't know there was a heavenly desserts nearby there is you have to go back so yum so so yum my mouth is watering just thinking about it and I've got a cheat because I had such a lovely dinner tonight. Dominique's staring at the pastel tints as well. One thing I would say about the pastel tint pencils, I think I've said this on one of my lives before, I haven't merged them with my other castle pencils because what I have found is they do bridge the gap with some of the other makes where you would want more of a pastel shade but they're just, there just aren't any. And they work really, really nicely with Prismas. Um, they work with the other Castle Arts pencils as well. So 
I think they've spotted spotted a really good sort of niche gap in the market there, really. <laughs> oh shucks, that says Angela, I'm gonna go back. <laughs> if you go back tomorrow, we'll be there stuffing our faces quite happily in the corner. So back to chartreuse again. So I'm gonna start at the top down so it just back blend everything now around all these edges. So get some of these nice light areas and put in a little bit more pressure on now because I'm just back blending everything with this colour. And then we can tweak any of the darker areas sort of as needed. But this sits really, really nicely over the top of these other ones. I'm quite liking that. I'm just going to tilt this so that I can see this out of the lamp light. So I can just see a few areas where I want to tweak this. I'm just wondering if I've got a shade darker than this. And maybe the dark green would do the job. Let's have a look. Might seem a bit stalkerish if I lurked around there tomorrow. <laughs> Not really. As long as you've not like got a bunny in a pan or whatever it is that Glenn Close does on that terrible movie. What's it called? Oh, that's going to annoy me now. What's it called where she boils the bunny? Oh. Fatal attraction. There we go. Jeez, I, the penny had to drop a lot. I'm blaming the fact I'll be a year older tomorrow. <laughs> so a little bit of dark green now. That's the one, Julie. That's the one. Fatal attraction. <laughs> right, where's my thingy brush? Oh, there it is. Just going to get rid of some of these little bits of Prismacolor. Do you sort of bit everywhere, don't they? Yeah, fatal attraction where she boils the bunny. Terrible movie. And this one's a little shorty. I just want to see how this sits over the top um, for a little bit more shadowy type things. It's not going to work without a pencil extender that's really difficult that's better I just want to add the smallest smidge of a bit more of a a darker green just to some of these edge areas because you wouldn't do sort of a shadow or anything in black I don't think on top of this lot it, it probably wouldn't look brilliant but I'm just going to do the tiniest little bit So these um, greens are all um, on the sort of yellow side of the palette. These aren't bluey greens, so you're pretty safe um, when you're trying to sort of smush these together, knowing that they're going to um, they're going to sit nicely together. So Dominique says, "Supermarket sweep is the game show. We would be nuts in a craft shop. Oh my god, it'd be um, it'd be like a scrum, wouldn't it? Absolute scrum." But you see, that's the beauty of going for nothing specific because you can just browse and have lots and lots of happy little accidents while you're there. Just tilt that again. Yep, so I'm just going to go ahead and blend, blend those out now with the grass green. And then that is probably enough tweakage on that one. I just blend it out slightly. I'm just going to push a bit harder because I just want a bit more of this um, grass green down here at the bottom area. You'd go for the cow and dash. Yeah, you'd go for the most expensive thing, wouldn't you? I'd be going for the polychromos, the Derwent Light Fast and the cow and dash. <laughs> Definitely. So I'm just going to do the same on this side. I just want a little bit more of a, a shadow along the side here. So I'll definitely blend this out as well. And maybe go for a little bit of a shadowing under this bit as well. 
<laughs> Nora would go for the Karen Dash and the Polly's as well. Hiya, Michelle. We're just talking about what a supermarket sweep would look like if we got the opportunity to go into a craft store and you've got a limited amount of time and you could go in and grab whatever you wanted to grab, what would be the first thing that we would go for? And I think if it was all of us together, we'd all be fighting for the same thing, so it would probably get quite ugly. Catherine wouldn't be. She'd be in the model section quite happy because all of us lot would be in the colouring section. <laughs> Release says the Karen Dash sounds amazing, but be too scared to use them. You shouldn't be scared to use them. They're lovely pencils. I do cry gently every time I want to sharpen one because they're so expensive to replace, but they're really nice to use. So I'm just blending out where I've added that darker green in. There we go, beautiful. Rugby, yeah, it would be. <laughs> Glitter pens as well, definitely. Imagine if it was an Amazon warehouse, how much fun we would have in there. Oh, just be fantastic right let's have a little look at the tree so i'm gonna do one of the trees up here and then i'm gonna love you guys and leave you guys because you know how the algorithms go with me i listen to so much of my rubbish and then get fed up so juniper green again so going from dark to light again oh julie you've bought some to try i want to hate them because of the price yeah i would know the ironic thing is I've had mine, um, well, I got my, my big set for my birthday last year and I've only just started to use them um, because of the uh, animal portrait type stuff that I'm trying to do. So it's really the first time that they've been out of the tin. I have cried gently, though, when I've been wanting to uh, having to sharpen them. It's a shame. But the Coloured Pencil Shop, which is the one that I use for my spares and things um you can get them from her single ones so yeah she's actually just had a restock not that i was looking on there well i was but you know but yeah i'll show you guys the owl thing quickly before i go because it's some um, different seeing it in real life to a picture so let's just pick out some of these darker areas I'm gonna have that as a light edge I think so I'm gonna actually blend these the opposite way ah oh, thanks Liz I'm looking forward to it right so that's gonna be a light edge I'm gonna put darker area in there and I'm going to run this just through the middle and let's put a little darker area in here as well might actually carry this bit on up here a bit further And just soften that a little bit so then on with the Prussian green so still with the castle arts watercolor so Noel's having to go oh thanks for stopping by um have a good evening yeah thank you Noel. I will um aim to have lots of cake and shopping be lovely so let's link these two together Just join these couple of bits together. And under here as well. Take that all the way down there because it's against the roof. Yeah, see you soon, Nor. Take care. Next session will be Sunday over on Facebook. So, and just carry on. Blend 
blending these bits together. One's going a bit scratchy on me for some reason, it probably needs a bit of a sharpen. Castle Green Light next. <laughs> Thanks, Elise. I'm sure it'll be a lovely day. Now get ourselves up and get over there so we can do lots and lots of shopping before we go and have lunch. It's the same up here, so I want a really light edge on the top of this bit. So blend that up almost to the very top and just fill the gap. And then finally a little bit of this leaf green which is the lightest one and I'll activate this show you guys the owl thing and then I'm going to love you and leave you because we've been at it for an hour and 15. I don't want to push my luck. So this one um, I'll obviously be applying the regular pencil over the top once it's dry so you won't see that bit but it's going to be exactly the same as the other two that I've shown you. Hello Colour Fab, I'm fine thank you, are you? So I'll just get this, um... oh thanks Dominique, I'll just get this going again, so it's just been, I'll oh, take care Dominique, see you soon, hopefully see you Sunday. I'm going to swizzle this round so it's actually the right way up for you guys, um, just because of the direction that I'm going to be blending this in. So again starting um, at the light edge. Gonna have to work reasonably quickly with this because we've got lots of different patches of light going into dark. So I'm just gonna give my brush a little wipe there. I don't want to drag all of the uh, dark pigment back. Just push that into those little bits. And we'll just push the darker bits back against the roof here. We can still move it round while it's wet. And we'll go under here next. Just push those darker bits in against the line art. And just remember as well, you can correct any of this that's not quite to your liking. Um, hi Nadia, with the ordinary pencil. So again, just working from the lightest areas into the darkest areas. So just go under here. Just work that back. And then I'll be using those Prismacolors over the top once this is dry. There we go. Would you be able to get me my sketchbook, please? It's standing up on the bookshelf. Right, let me just unzoom. So I will be using exactly the same colours um, for... The tree up here I've also got um, an area of foliage here at the bottom on this side 
and also a little bit here behind these pots. So I'll be making a note of these greens because some of these little leaves I may well use them, thank you, use them again. So the next session will be Sunday over in my Facebook group. So if you're not already a member of my Facebook group, the link to the group is in my bio. Just um, click to join. Just remember to answer the membership questions and agree to the group rules. And then I'll just um, show you guys this owl thing. So the only project so far that I've used my luminance on has been this. So this is a mixture of um, Polychromos and the Caran d'Ache luminance pencils. So most of um, the eye is actually Polychromos and a lot of this feather work is actually in the luminance and that's the first time that I'd really used them since getting them for my birthday last year. So like Julie was saying, they are obviously a lot of money. Um, I'm quite happy with what I've done with them and I'm going to be doing more of this um, following that. It's Amy Howard Art over on Patreon. Um, one of her tutorials has done this. But yeah, this is um, Luminance and Polychromos. So that was what I was working on, which is why my tennis elbow is as bad as it is because they're quite hard pencils to blend. So um, copying out and using um, watercolour for this is a lot more, <laughs> it's a lot better. <laughs> so I'm going to love you guys and leave you guys. Um, thanks for your company again tonight. Um, this will be over on YouTube a little bit later on this evening. It's because obviously you guys have been having to watch it sideways. When you go onto YouTube, it will of course be the right way around. So bear with me for an hour or so while I get it all uploaded and all the rest of it. And I will see you again, all being well, on Sunday. So it will be 4pm UK time in my own Facebook group. So the link to my both my YouTube channel and my Facebook group are in my bio. So I'm going to love you and leave you now. Thank you very much for your company and all your birthday wishes. It's much appreciated. And I will update you with what I buy tomorrow. Take care. See you soon. Bye for now.